So today I'm going to talk about one uh, critical distinction between three exercises we take the kettlebell from rack to overhead. And these are strict press, push press, and jerk. And the distinction is in the path of the kettlebell and in the movement of the arm, which is actually different for these three exercises. So in the strict press, the whole movement is performed with the shoulder and the tricep. And because of that, we're gonna obey shoulder mechanics. And to make it as advantageous as possible, you would flare your elbow just slightly out to the side. Now, in previous videos, I've mentioned that if you want to strengthen your tricep, you would press through the front. And that is still true. For a lot of people, the triceps are very weak, so it is actually good to focus a little bit more on pressing through the front rather than flaring out to the side like this. However, if you wanted to just press as much weight as possible, you would flare slightly out to the side. I don't mean flare out all the way to here because that's not good for your shoulder. Instead, flare slightly out to the side. This is exactly the same as when you're doing push-ups. If you wanted to push, press, uh, to push up the biggest possible weight, so for example, you're doing a push-up with some plates on your back, you would push up with your elbows just slightly flaring out. Not out here, because that's just bad for your shoulders, and also not super close. Well, that's great for your triceps, but it doesn't allow you to put your shoulder to its biggest advantage. Not so for the push press and the jerk. So in the push press and in the jerk especially, the movement of pressing the kettlebell up, so here, is not actually performed by the shoulder. It is performed by the legs. So we don't have to be slaves to shoulder pressing mechanics. We can bypass it because the goal is to get the kettlebell to overhead. And if we're not slaves to shoulder mechanics, then we can get it in the most efficient way possible, meaning moving it in a straight vertical line, right? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So we get it up, just through the front. And this is true for the push press, and this is true for the jerk. In the jerk, you don't use your shoulders at all because you push with your legs and you catch with your legs. So the shoulder is serving only a stabilizing function. Therefore, the kettlebell and the elbow moves through the front and never flares out to the side like this. The reason why I decided to make this video is because I frequently see this when people move from strict, uh, from strict pressing without using the legs into push pressing and then into jerking the kettlebell, but they retain the same pressing pattern. But if you retain the same pressing pattern, then what's the point of push pressing and jerking? Because the whole idea is you now do not have to rely solely on the shoulder. You now have the legs. And so the whole pattern changes. So because of that, whether you're doing doubles or singles, in the strict press, you can flare out your elbows slightly, unless you're focusing on training your triceps, in which case, keep your elbows forward. In the push press, try to move in a straight line. And in the jerk, absolutely and definitely, you're moving in a straight line. Now there's one thing about the push press, when you're lowering the kettlebells down, so if you're doing a push press and you're training for strength and you're lowering the kettlebells down, you might lower them under control in a flared fashion. Because you're lowering them down using the power of your shoulders, right? So you can flare your elbows a little bit. That's the whole idea of the push press. You use push press to increase your pressing strength. So if you have maxed out, for example, you can't do presses 
or you need to move to a heavier kettlebell and you can't yet press the heavier kettlebell, you can push press it and then you slowly lower into the rack. The negative training, right? Eccentrics. And when you do that, you can push press it up uh, through the front and then slowly lower using the shoulder mechanics. Not so for the jerk, because in the jerk, the weight is supposed to be so heavy that you cannot use your shoulders either to lift it up or to lower it down. So in the jerk, we are moving through the front, both on the way up and on the way down. The most common error in the jerk that I see is people try to press the jerk. So going around here and then lowering them down this way. That is just a waste of time and energy. Jerk moves through the front, push press on the way up, moves through the front, on the way down, can move through the sides if you strictly lower it. If you're dropping, just drop it down. And strict press can flare if you're pressing your max or go through the front if you want to train your triceps. I hope that this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions.